Hey YouTube, just want to have a quick discussion about how we're going all things digital, from digital currency to other parts of the human experience that are going digital. Is it more convenient? Yeah. Is it better? Well, let's have that discussion. There's no question in my mind that we're going towards an all digital currency. I mean, none at all. And, and it's pretty obvious, right? And right here, the Bitcoin is going to go, see, that's it, Bitcoin, it's, it's going to be Bitcoin. First of all, of all the obnoxious stories that I've heard that just don't make sense, Bitcoin as the world's reserve currency, yeah, that's, that's the one you'll hear, is ridiculous. Okay, I, I want you to just say to yourself, okay, the Winklevoss twins control 5% of Bitcoin. The Winklevoss twins are going to control 5% of the world's reserve currency. So start there and work your way backwards, okay? Reverse engineer that little thought and just ask yourself, does that really make sense to me? I mean, really. You know, I remember, um, uh, I think Raw Dog did a video on it a while ago, um, and the Winklevoss twins said that the value of Bitcoin is going to be $1 trillion. And there was a bunch of Bitcoiners that were just like, I mean, listen to what they said. Yeah, they control 5% of it. Of course they're going to say that. Does that make sense to you, really? I digress. It's uh, going to be digital dollars, okay? We, we see more and more of these payment systems coming online, you know, Google Wallet and Apple Pay, and, you know, certainly PayPal has, it has a role. And, you know, it's all going to be easily tracked. Um, it, it's happening. It, it's going to be embraced. It's going to be embraced by the people because to them it's more convenient. And they will gladly give up freedom and they will gladly give up other things for just an incremental gain in convenience. So that's where we're headed. And you're going to be pretty much powerless to stop it. You know, in all fairness, if you think about it, um, I mean, I, I'm already there now, to be honest with you. Um, I never carry cash on me. Never. I don't, I don't even have a single dollar bill in my wallet and I, I rarely do. I have to make a conscious decision and I don't even have any in the house. I, I have no cash in the house and no uh, cash in my wallet ever. Everything gets deposited in the bank. I pay my bills electronically. Um, anything I purchase I use with a credit card. If somebody doesn't take credit cards, they lose my business. Pay off the balance at the end of the month. Rinse, repeat. Um, it just wasn't that long ago that that wasn't the case. Um, you know, you, people would uh, buy their groceries and write a check or uh, or pay cash. I mean, that's just done. Everybody's swiping their cards now. EBT cards, credit cards, or debit cards. <coughs> if you're standing in line at the grocery store, I mean, you'll see that. I mean, just just kind of ask yourself. Just just watch for this. You know, when you go to the gas station, when you go to the grocery store, who's who's paying with cash? It's almost shocking now to see somebody break out cash. The problem is is you're having a little bit of your freedom stripped away by doing this. Let's say, uh, let's say in August you wanted to go to the World's Fair of Money, okay? And, you know, you're, you're a pretty big, uh, pretty big spender. You want to make sure you have enough cash because you're going you're gonna to see some amazing stuff there. So you want to bring $50,000 in cash on you. Just go try pulling $50,000 in cash out of the bank. And then worse yet, you don't actually buy anything, Go try to deposit $50,000 in cash. They're going to look at you like you're a drug dealer. Okay? And, you know, there are all kinds of laws in the books pre uh, preventing you from doing this. And now I want you to go read up on asset forfeiture. Okay? I want you to go read up on cash-strapped de uh, police departments that are basically looking to seize assets at every turn. Now, picture that you get pulled over for uh, whatever, speeding, going on I-90 over to, uh, to over to Chicago, okay, and the police department pulls you over and they see that you have a lot of cash on you. Yeah, there's a good chance you're going to lose that cash. Go read up on asset forfeiture laws, okay? So, yeah, they want to control everything that you're doing with your money, your money. So will this move to a digital currency be more convenient? Absolutely, I'm sure it will. Break out your iPhone, bang, bang, and everything's paid for. Is it better? I would argue no. But the, you know, the, the question is, what other parts of the human experience are going to be digitized? I mean, we're already there with music, right? You'd be hard-pressed to tell me that uh, today's music is better than it was 30, 40 years ago.
and that the experience of buying music is better. More convenient? Absolutely. Better? I don't know. You know, my son, uh, God, I can't remember what the name of the song is. It's a new one by Florida, and it has horns in it. My son wanted a download of this song. And uh, this, it was a song they use in, in the intro for his, his basketball tournament, and it's catchy. Um, I, whatever. I can't remember. I'm not going to remember it. But, uh, you know, he wanted to download it onto his iTunes. So I listened to it. I'm like, well, i got to get the clean version and, and put it on his iPod. But that's it. There's no real connection to the music. There's no realness behind it. You know, it's kind of like, um, I think back to when I was a kid and Led Zeppelin had an album release. Okay, you'd go down to the record store. You'd be there with other uh, enthusiasts for Led Zeppelin and you'd buy this album. And you'd see all the artwork and the, all the thought they put behind it. And, and it was almost like, each album was like, a, you know, it wasn't just a, a collection of individual songs. There was like a whole concept behind the album. It all flowed together. It was almost like reading a book, listening to one of these albums. And it's timeless. It's 40 years later, there's still people listening to this stuff and enjoying it like the day it was released. You know, Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, Metallica, all these just classic bands. And the stuff is as fresh today as it was when it was first released. Timeless. Will my son be listening to Flo Rida in 15 or 20 years? I seriously highly doubt it. It's, it's as disposable as a K-cup today, okay? <laughs> um, you know, you, you, you put that record on the record player, and, you, and you'd hear that familiar, you know, uh, waiting sound that as it, it went through that opening ring and then went to that first song, and then there it was, right? And you'd be sitting there staring at the artwork and the lyrics and everything else. And it was, a real, it was an experience. It wasn't just buying a Led Zeppelin album. There was a whole experience tied to it. And, man, that decade of music was something else. Today, it's just disposable crap. All digitized. You know, is it more convenient? Yes, absolutely. Look, going up to my bedroom and, and <laughs> having... Having the song downloaded in his iPod in, in 45 seconds is certainly more convenient than having to go down to the record store to buy your record. Is it better, though? Is the experience better? I don't think it is. You know, I think about kids, and uh, you know, they're not even going to even understand the, of what I'm talking about because they're never going to experience it. So who knows? I, in some ways... I feel like like fiscal conservatives and people that are uh, that that want something that's real and, and believe in sound money, we, we might as well be a part of the Whig Party, to be honest with you. And and we're going to see that play out in 2016. You know, the American people are going to speak, and they're going to want more of what they've been getting. And it's just that simple. And and I have further discussions on that. I don't, I don't want to get off track. Um, video games were already there, right? And and the thing is, with even with video games, it used to be. And maybe this video is my "Hey kids, get off my lawn" moment. I don't know. I really don't know. Maybe this is just me getting older. I just I do romanticize about when I was a kid, and it was a summer day, and I would leave the leave the house, and I would go round up my friends, and we'd go play baseball in the park. You know, uh, we'd have ghost runners and that whole thing. We'd go out in the woods and play in forts, and we'd build forts, and we'd go play in the streams and everything else. And that's just all gone. You know, now everything is. Um, I have to, <laughs> I have to be the one that calls up the parents to arrange a playtime for my son and daughter and their friends, and then they get together in some sanitized environment, and or they come inside and they just play video games, and even worse is the uh, like the Xbox Online. I mean, I, I know it's convenient, I know it is, okay, but a kid sitting there by himself with a headset on playing a video game is just it's just not healthy. And you're going to see more and more of this, okay? You're going to you, as and and basically, uh, video games are going to go digital. You know, it's all going to be download stuff, kind of like it is with mobile now. You know, that most of the games are are just simple, easy down downloads for apps on, on a mobile device. And you're going to see the uh, the boxes have the ability to just simply download games if we're not there already. I mean, we're 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 on the cusp of it, um, but it's not any better. You know, uh, you're losing that human interaction. 
I, I think what you're going to end up seeing is uh, people are going to be even more depressed in 15 or 20 years than they are today. There's going to be more social outcasts than there are today. And people are going to be depressed and they're not going to really know why. They're not going to understand that they're basically having a lot of what makes them humans kind of stripped away, all, the, all of their needs. You know, and, and it reminds me, um, somebody in our community, I don't want to say what their name is, but they, um, they, they volunteer periodically in Nicaragua. And I saw some beautiful pictures of these kids with just, they have nothing. I mean, they're, they're just in poverty that we can't even imagine. And yet there they are playing with a big smile on their face. You know, they don't know what they're missing. And uh, this person even told me that the, these people are, are really happy. They, they have nothing but they're happy. And you just wonder, you know, as, as we keep going digital here and uh, we lose the realness that, you know, we, we've lost real money, obviously. Um, what are going to be the negative ramifications of all this? Um, you're going to see obesity levels continue to spike. Okay, I mean, these are, these are societal trends that are going to continue. You're going to see obesity levels spike. You're going to see depression levels spike. <clears throat> you're going to see people become stagnant. And I don't think that's a good thing. I think that's a horrible thing, to be honest with you. Um, but, you're, you know, we're all powerless to kind of stop this. People are going to basically sign up for any incremental gain and convenience that they can. The K-Cup's a perfect example of that, right? I mean, how lazy are we that we can't, you know, we keep our freeze, uh, coffee in the freezer and we spoon out, um, and we buy one of those coffee bags and we spoon out a couple spoonfuls into a single serve coffee maker and that's how we make our coffee. But people have transitioned to the K-Cup now because, yeah, it's, it's a lot more expensive um, and certainly the K-Cups are destructive to the environment, but oh well, it, it, it's a little bit easier. So they built a multi-billion dollar empire on an incremental gain in convenience. That's where we're headed. People are looking for that. All right, guys. Silver and gold. Feel the real. If you are a fiscal conservative, you might as well be a dinosaur. Your day is done.